I am just gonna get started because my friend Smiley, who translates my videos, is probably gonna have a lot of work to do because I've got a shitload of products to talk about. So let's start off with the products that I really recommend. First is the Misha. First is the Misha Signature or Attention Longwear Cover. This isn't the case, like I've said many, uh, like a million times. This is, um, I bought the case separately and it's one of those tension cushions. When I first tried out tension cushions, I tried the, the first Misha one and I hated it. But this one is definitely more coverage and the formula is more creamy. And it's definitely more long wearing. So it, this one is actually good for people that have oily skin, but they want that kind of creamy, glowy looking skin. This has got to be in like my top five cushions of like all time. The Kill Cover Foundwear Cushion XP, like the renewed version. This one is just a regular cushion. This is actually really popular in Korea, especially amongst like the uh, beauty blogger community. The formula is really, really thin and it's really long wearing, but it's full coverage, but it still looks really natural. Like it looks like skin. I took this with me to Singapore and I was just like, oh, it's gonna break down in the hot weather, the hot human weather. But surprisingly, it looked the same from morning till night. So this again is not extremely matte, but it's more, um, it's just like a natural kind of slightly glowy finish. So this one I highly recommend. Probably for any skin type actually. I reviewed this Chosunga Bounce Up Pack TM. Uh, this is a number two sand beige. I'll link the review video up here or down below. It, I thought it was okay, but I felt like it was just too expensive. It kind of made my skin look a little dry and it felt a little tight. But I took this with me to Singapore and this is perfect for those with oily skin that live in hot, humid weather. It did not budge at all. I think the humidity in the air helped to keep it look uh, more like skin. The texture is actually really interesting. It's um, kind of like this putty consistency. And you, you can actually get a really full coverage, but it's super lightweight thin. And actually, I don't like the sponge that I came with, so I replaced it with this puff. So this one is definitely for those with combination or really oily skin. I don't recommend it for people that have dry skin or live in a cold climate. But for those of you that do have dry skin, um, this is one that I really enjoyed ever since I picked it up. It's the Too Cool For School Art Class Liquid Satin Luminous Foundation. There's another one that looks just like this, but this is the more luminous glowy version. And this is kind of like a liquid version of this one maybe, but less coverage. It's more like a medium coverage. So it's great for those that want like a natural finish. Uh, these ones can still look natural, but this one, the formula is a lot lighter. And even though I do have oily skin, I love the way it looks after I put it on and then I set it with powder. Because I set it with powder throughout the day, the moisture from the like, the foundation and then the, I guess, the dryness from the powder combining make my skin look really nice and natural. The coverage is decent, but if you have really good skin already, I think it would look really nice on you. Um, if you want, if you have maybe a little bit of redness here and you just want to cover it up and get like that really natural glow. As you can tell, the whole glowy thing is a theme in the foundations that I like this month because it is winter in Korea and it is fucking cold. I swear to God, I feel like I've mentioned this product like a million times on my channel already. It's a glow on oil volume base from Etude House. I've said so much about it already, so I'm just going to keep it short. Perfect, perfect primer. Like not primer for like making your makeup last longer, but primer for making sure your foundation doesn't look dry and cakey, um, especially if it's more mattifying or if you live in a cold area where the air can make your foundation, make your skin look drier. I know there's an aqua version, but I think that's like a waste of time. I think you should just get the oil volume base. If you want to use oils like this on your face, but you just think it's too oily for you, this is really thin and it only leaves just a slight oil finish, but it feels more like a moisturizer, if anything. For concealer, um, this is one that I've shown, I've been using for months now, and I just got back into it. It's the Ink Corrector from Petty Peta. And I don't know what is in here, but uh, I put it on and I blend it out and literally my dark circles are gone. And it is part of their ink line, so it is more uh, long wearing. Usually when I put a color corrector on, I blend it out and my skin just looks like gray or washed out. But for the, some reason, this one, I don't know what it is, but it's like the perfect shade of peach to correct my dark circles. So um, if you have if you have good skin and you but you only have problems with dark circles, um, then I really recommend this one or anyone that has dark circles. And then for concealer, I've been using the full cover. This is from Aritam, and I've used this for so you guys already know what this is. Um, I like it because it's more has a lot more oils and emollients in it, so it's more uh, chok chok. It's not as like dry like some other concealers. And I find that this works well on, lot, on top of most foundations because some concealers can be a little too dry so they don't work well on top of 
other foundations. This one like really sticks well. This eyeshadow from Misha, I used this in an Instagram video and some people were asking what it was because I kind of showed it too quickly. <laughs> But this is a Misha eyeshadow and this is the Itala Prism shadow in number 11, Vanilla Sugar. And I've pretty much just been using this as a highlighter because it's so freaking... Oh my god. I think it was around October-ish? November-ish? Um, that my friend had gotten me this palette as a gift. This is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette and I swear to god this is like... I wanna, I literally wanna reach for this every single day, but because I have so much makeup, I have to like test or whatever. I, it's, it's like a treat. It's like a special treat when I get to use this palette. But for me, I've noticed over time that what, the colors that suit me the best are like really warm red browns, kind of caramels, oranges, colors like that. Like the colors I'm wearing on my face right now. And this fits the bill perfectly. I, oh my, I really think that Korean eyeshadows do not hold, um, What's the phrase? I really just feel like they're not as good as um, maybe some Ameri a lot of American brands. But this, the color payoff, the Pyrsec is like, like however you see it in here is gonna be how it is on your face, on your eyes, your face, on your eyes. And it actually lasts a long, sometimes I get lazy with the eye primer, but I noticed with this one, I don't have to worry because it looks pretty much the same even on my oily. I, I still do put powder on my eyes, but it lasts pretty much all day and I just freaking love like I want to use every color. You guys know I'm an amateur at makeup so I'm real one thing I'm really bad at is I'll like do my when I'm doing my makeup I'll do my eyes and I'll do my lips almost separately so what will happen is my eyes look nice and everything but it won't match my lip color I'm like really bad at that so what I started doing was on days that I want to emphasize my lip color I'll just go super natural try to do natural eye makeup and for that my go-to combination has been these two pony effect sorry this is gonna be a lot of pony effect in this video pony effect unlimited cream shadows and these are really popular in korea recently um even though they were released a long time ago actually and there's just cream shadows but this one is like a really pretty oh my, that's really i do not put that much on um i actually sheer it out a lot here i take it it's, this is too much but i take it about here i put that all over the lid however shape I want, like a little bit under my eye. And then I'll take this shadow. This one is in Future Proof. This one is high standards. And this one is Future Proof. And this is a kind of pearl oyster color. Oh my God, that is so pretty. It has like, it's like a beige shimmer with hints of pink in it. And I put that in the center and on the inner corner and that's like my eye look. And I think it looks really, really pretty. And because it's a long wear cream eyeshadow, I don't have to worry about it throughout the day. And I don't need a primer underneath it because it's a long wear cream eyeshadow. These two eyeshadows from Pony Effects came out recently and I freaking love them. Um, I don't put them all over my lids though. I just use them as like highlight accent shades. This is the Grind Sparkling Shadow and the concept of these is that, oh my god, okay. So you've got this grind right and you turn it and it grinds fresh eyeshadow out every time. There we go. Right there. This one is in Club Kid. Prepare yourselves. Oh my. You probably can't see that because it's kind of similar. Oh, let me let me swatch the other one. This one is in Guest List. Oh, holy shit. Oh my god. These would be perfect for those of you that like to just put one eyeshadow on your lid and then put eyeliner, mascara or something. Um, I personally like to just use them as like uh, right here center highlight and on the inner corner. The only thing that really freaking annoys me though is that, do you see the shape right here? There's a little bit of space on each side. So when you close it, there's still actually air between the container and the lid. So if you're shaking it around, whatever shadow you grinded will like fall out so when you open it you run the risk of it just falling out and that's it really pisses me off so my recommendation for that is to just grind a little bit each time however much you need and make sure there's no extra shadow that's out so or, or else it will just like fall out all right this has got to be like my favorite release of makeup since forever at all 
And surprisingly, it's not Pony Effect. I made a review video on this whole collection, so I'm just gonna talk about it briefly here. If you wanna see all the swatches and everything, I will link that up here or down below. But this is the 3CE Mood Recipe Collection, and this is like the newer one. I freaking love all the lipsticks. These are all matte lipsticks. Um, it's what I have on my lips today. Oh my, that is so, it looks so, so interesting. It's like this matte lipstick. But the lipsticks, even though they're a little bit hard, you do kind of have to like rub them onto your lips. Your body heat will kind of melt the lipstick a little bit, uh, but you get this really pretty smooth matte finish, and I think it looks super modern. And I love the colors. They're very, like I said, warm, red, corally, uh, very fall colors almost, but I think it looks perfect like even now. I don't really wear blush, but I like want to wear these every single day because the colors of blush really mimic the color of real people's blush. And I love that they're all really kind of like muted. So they're very understated and natural looking and they don't really clash with the rest of your makeup. And as for the eyeshadows, <laughs> you're just gonna have to see the video for the swatches, but uh, hashtag overtake has been like the palette, other than the Naked Heat palette, this palette, pff, I literally cannot get, out, get enough of. Again, really warm, caramel, red, burgundy sorts of colors, and I freaking love these two uh, shimmer shades right here. The only thing I don't like though is that the shadow is super crumbly, so you have to be careful when you open it because even closing it, it will cause the eyeshadow to and like break apart a little bit on the edges, so I need to get a backup of this. And again, I can literally will not shut up about this product. I really freaking recommend it. It's the Naked Face Aha uh -huh Scaling Cream. I mentioned in the video review for this that I got back into it, and um, I've been getting a lot of comments recently about how my it looks like my scars are really fading, and it's definitely this. Like I've said before, you, your skin does need to get used to it because for like a month, your face will be peely and dry and scaly. But after that, you're, after your skin gets over it and gets used to it, you have really beautifully moist, smooth, plumped out skin, um, and it really has helped taking care of my uh, acne scar. I still have really deep acne scarring that I think I would need to go get a laser for, but, but if you're struggling with like pitted acne scarring, this is definitely a must try. It's not exactly cheap, but you only need like a tiny bit anyway. Like this has lasted me forever and I only need like a tiny little scoop. All right, so that's the stuff of the month that I really enjoyed. Now time for the things that I thought were, um, they were just okay. There's some things about them that I enjoy, but I think I would probably recommend to people with other skin types maybe or something. This is the Chong Sammu Essential Star Sealer Foundation. And it's foundation, but this is the for oily skin version. And when you open it, you have this really big mirror here and then you get like this square puff for the foundation and you get a mini concealer. This is a really great concealer brush. You take this off and here you get a solid concealer. And here on this side is the foundation you put squeeze it out. There's this little pad right here that's supposed to look like skin, so you can kind of mix the concealer and foundation together. Makeup artists here really love to mix liquidy foundation with like solid concealer to get uh, way more coverage in the foundation in order to get like a really perfect base. And the coverage in the foundation alone is so freaking high, like it's really really full coverage. Same with the concealer. I love that the foundation concealer had that kind of ochre under it because you don't see a lot of foundation these days. It's either warm or cool, but um, you don't see a lot of like really yellow ochre foundations. It has a really great under This is like perfect for my summer foundation, which is what I think I'll use it for because it is more on that dry side and that's why it's in this category because I felt like it's so oil controlling that it looks a little dry on my skin. Um, especially these days, it's too it's too cold for me to use this. But um, if you have extremely oily skin, I definitely like this. And this, I recommend for the oiliest of skins. I also got this um, at Beauty Bakery. It's the Wake and Bake Baking Oil for Face. Um, this is perfect for those that like to only use oil as like their, like they'll, they'll cleanse their face, right? And then they'll just use oil before they do makeup. This would be perfect for that, but for me, I do have like skincare before, but adding this after skincare, but before makeup, it just makes my foundation slip and slide off super quickly, and it makes it look a little cakey. But if you just put this on alone, it looks perfect. It's really great for people with dry skin because um, it keeps your skin from getting um, dry and cakey looking from your foundation, especially for foundations like this. 
Then we've got the Pony Effect Galaxy Holographic Palette. I also have a review on this. I really recommend you check it out here. Like I said in the video, I was really confused by the concept of this, but now that I found out how to use it, I think it's amazing. Um, the only downsides I find is that the cream, you need to use eye primer, especially for me with hooded eyelids and my eyelids are oily. Um, these really crease quickly. Um, so I recommend primer and then definitely using one of these holographic, holographic, some people got so, I know that's a holographic, that's a shimmer. Okay, congratulations. A primer, this, and then a powder to kind of set it on top. I feel like you can really only get really simple looks with this, but they're very simple, but very pretty, like multi-dimensional with like these really pretty shimmers here. And it really makes wearing these kind of crazy pastel colors a little bit easier because um, these are more nat like natural colors, I feel like. I got these from this time a long time, but I actually did a review on my channel. I, I filmed a review, but I deleted because I, I hated the way it came out. So I did actually just end up posting a Instagram video on these. This is the paint um, stuff from the Sam. You've got the eye, no, you've got the eye paints here and the lip paints. The concept of these is that they're supposed to be like go on and smooth on like paint. But what I find is that even though they're pigmented and smooth, even the dark colors, um, they're not really patchy. They transfer so easily. They don't actually fully set. They don't dry down. They're forever like <laughs> moist, I guess. So I like to, do this a lot when I have lip colors on for some reason. And in that video of me and Coco on our, on our first Korean date or whatever, I did. I noticed that it bled all the way down here and it looked terrible. So great for those with dry lips, but you have to be careful about it moving and transferring and feathering. The eye paints, they're okay. They're kind of like um, this, but they're not as pigmented, which is good for a lot of Korean girls because they don't want anything too strong. The colors are pretty, but I just find that they're not buildable enough to get like more color payoff. And finally, we have the products I just disliked completely this month. The first one is, I don't have it with me because I threw them away, is the Laneige Lip Cards. Really gimmicky idea. Um, I will link the video where I use them up here or down below. Concept was cute, but I just don't like the formula of the lipstick itself. Um, and I think it's a little unsanitary. I do think that they're maybe nice if you want to try out a new lip color because they are they are super, super cheap. So if you want to be adventurous, you can pick like a crazy color or something. But other than that, it's hard to precisely put it where you want your lips because you're kind of just And then the other one is, I think I also threw it away, is the uh, 16 brand, the two eyeshadow thing. It's another gimmicky product where you're supposed to be able to swipe your eyeshadow on in one go, but the shape of the brush didn't work well for my eyes. Cause the brush is just like this and it's kind of just like swiping this rectangle of shadow and the pigment isn't really that great. I know some people are saying you should, you need to swipe back and forth, but the brush just doesn't pick up enough eyeshadow. So you'll have like a lot of pigment where you first started, then it fades into like nothing. So you have to keep like digging back and forth. And even then it, the eyeshadow is a little bit crumbly. So it falls on your face and it just was, it didn't look cute at the end. It's probably just my eye shape because I have a really like, you know, this kind of eye shape. I have no lid space. So it might be my fault, but I just really did. I think it's not worth the money that it is. So those are my favorites of the month. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.